Hello everyone. I bring you some uh, interesting news today because I've been, today has actually been my only uh, really free day without any uh, interruption because believe it or not, even though I've been traveling, I'm still uh, located in Madrid. I am still, um, I'm, I'm, I've actually still been working. So it has not changed in that way. I'm always working in some kind. I wasn't going to abandon my students, even though the time changes. Uh, it's six hours ahead of uh, the Eastern Standard Time in the U.S. Something very interesting to note uh, for those of you who are into, uh, interested in time zones, uh, Spain is actually an, uh, in the summertime is two hours ahead of what it actually should be uh, relative to its position on the sun. Uh, in the winter, it should actually be five hours ahead of Eastern Standard Time, just like Portugal or the United Kingdom. But what happened was that during the uh, during the Second World War, uh, the Generalissimo Franco uh, had the clock set ahead an hour so that it could be synchronized with German time. Because as if you, if you look at the map of Europe, Germany is uh, to the east of, uh, of Spain. But anyway, I bring you, so that's an interesting side note for uh, time purposes. So it's always, that's one of the reasons why the lunches here are so late because 2 p.m., uh, people normally eat at 2 p.m., 2, 2.30, 3 p.m., if you look at the clock, though, that's actually 12 uh, by the sun. It's actually 12 noon or 1 p.m. Um, so it's not really that they have a late lunch. Uh, it's just that they're going by the the, the, the time on the sun, uh, the, the position of the sun. So but I brought uh, this. I'm going to bring to your attention something because I was uh, to, since today I had no interruptions. I was able to go to a bookstore that only specializes in selling uh, textbooks. And they have all kinds of textbooks, including math textbooks. So I asked the gentleman that was working there, I said, I need to have, I, if I could please have a look at um, his math uh, textbook. So he asked me, he said, what level are you looking for? I said, well, anything you've got. Because in his store, it changes every week, he said, because he actually buys textbooks from students. So he didn't really have a lot of selection today because it depends on the time of year. But he did have two of them that I was interested in. And I bought uh, very, very fair uh, prices. And it just, it always blows my mind just how much better it is. You go to any other country in the world, or mo at least the ones I'm familiar with, and the math textbooks are just so much better than the uh, what you get in the U.S., uh, even especially these days. So I'm going to show you two books that I was, that I had, that he had, that I was able to buy that I think is relevant to some of my classes. And uh, so the first one is this one. I don't know if you could see it on, wait a minute. let's see if I can show you. And um, I don't know if you can see it with the, with the glare, but this is a very, uh, this is supposed to be for, um, it's from the publishing company is Anaya. And uh, let me explain to you a little bit about how it works um, in, in Spain. Uh, so the, the education system here tracks you when you are very young. So you either become a sciences person or you become a, uh, a what they call letras, which means uh, that you do like a literature humanities, right? So they do divide students into two groups, basically. And so this, this particular book, he said, is for uh, the science track. This is actually for math students who are... So the closest uh, in the United States, and it's not, it doesn't even come close, but I'm trying to give you some context, the closest would be something like AP calculus, right? So uh, the, some of the topics you'd cover in AP calculus are covered in, uh, this book is called Matematicas Dos. And it is, uh, it says here, uh, uh, this means like high school level, bachillerato, right? So this means that it, um, that it would be for high school students. Uh, that would be like 11th or 12th grade in the US. But I just wanted to show you a little bit because this is a book that, despite the glossy cover, which I don't like, but that's pretty standard these days, um, it's, it's a book that I dare say still assumes that uh, students, uh, teenagers, put, uh, possess functioning neurons. And th the volume that I have here, it does not open with the all too familiar uh, insult to our intelligence uh, that we get in the U.S. It's normally, you know, in the U.S. if you open your textbook 
and uh, some of you who are in high school, you can correct me if I'm wrong if you're watching this video, but most of the American textbooks open up with a some kind of math fun fact uh, or a cartoon mascot of some kind. But this actually begins, I'm going to show you some of the pages with uh, actual mathematics. And I'm talking real mathematics, the kind that involves, you know, they do have a chapter here on limits, derivatives, uh, integrals, um, and concepts that in an American high school uh, would be covered in not a, a lot of depth, if at all, and they would be uh, reserved for people deemed gifted. And only after they've endured uh, three years of counting how many how many watermelons Jamal can buy with 75 cents. But the average U.S. high school senior, um, you know, some of you know that you're still, some of you are still wrestling with quadratic equations. And, you know, you, you, if, you were, if you were to get a book like this, you'd be in big trouble. Um, and Spanish students are, at least the science ones, of course, let me, let me be very specific. I'm not saying all the students here do that, but the ones who are at least in the science track, they're, you know, they're breezing through the fundamental theorem of calculus before they get to college. Uh, they differentiate, there's differentiation here of trigonometric functions, um, and they integrate, uh, uh, they, they learn integration here. So let's talk the structure, right? So this book is unapologetically sequential. I would say it's rigorous, not as rigorous as they used to be. In fact, I was talking to the gentleman and he knows a lot of math students. He says, no, the books nowadays in Spain and France too, he says, they're not as, um, they're not, if you compare it to the 1980s, for example, or the or 70, they're less rigorous for their standards, but for our standards in the US, they're, they're still pretty good. Um, so I noticed that it's sequential, it's rigorous, uh, there are no endless review chapters for concepts you should have learned uh, years ago, but didn't because you know how in America we believe every child is precious, right? No child left behind. They still, they're getting to that level here, I was told. But again, they what they consider bad here is still nowhere near how bad things have gotten uh, in the U.S. when it comes to um, education. And you can tell, I mean, just by looking at the book, the book is not going to coddle you. It assumes that you're aiming for uh, university. Uh, it assumes that you can follow logical uh, thought. You know, they have, they assume set theory already. Um, it, it doesn't, it does include some biographies. I'm going to show you some, right? Uh, and I, I, I don't think that's a bad thing, right? Here are some, sorry, it's been covered in plastic since it was used to protect the book. So you could see here that it's covered, uh, it has some biographies here, right? You can see that it has some information like this one has uh, so Galey and, Sy and Sylvester, right? They're talking about determinants in this one. And, you know, it, 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 this, it treats you, though, like, like an adult with a spine, right? Uh, it, you know, not a toddler with a TikTok account. And so I have expected when I was browsing through it in the shop, I, have ex I had expected to open it and find... Um, you know, the usual, based on the cover, right, the usual nonsense we get in the U.S. The cover is kind of modern, um, but as you can see, let me show you a different page. I mean, this is just beautiful stuff, right? Notice no, no graphics, once again, no graphics. The problems are not easy, by the way. Not, I mean, certainly not for uh, the average student in the U.S. So, in brief, here's my review. If you are an American high school student and you're reading Matematicas Dos, right, Mathematics 2, it will feel like being handed, uh, you're going to feel like this is real armor. Uh, if you're a teacher in the U.S., this book might either break your heart or make you or, or make you wish you had something like this. Um, and if you're a, a pure mathematician like myself, it's really like finally being invited to a conversation you've waited decades for. Um, a conversation where calculus is a uh, beginning, right? Not a climax. And where the word challenge doesn't come with a warning label. There's no such thing here. I'm, I'm looking through. Um, let's see. 
Yeah, there's no such thing here as so-called challenge problems. All the problems are labeled, however, let me just double check something. So they start you off in, in the chapters with basic exercises. They, they, they call them proposed exercises, and then they get a little bit harder as you go through. They do say that. And some of them have like, um, let's see here. I can, I can see the former students circled some of the problems, but yeah, none, none of them are labeled as challenging, right? They're all expected uh, to be challenging in some way. So thank you, Anaya Publishers. Uh, you've written a math book and we're still writing. Uh, I don't know what we're doing in the US lately, but um, I have another chapter. Uh, I have another book to show you. I actually was able to get several books, thank God. Hopefully I can fit them all in my luggage. This is another one that actually, there's actually two books in here. I don't know if you could see well, it's called uh, Mathematica's pra uh, Practica, Practica. And it says here on the bottom, it says analysis. Um, and the first, so this part here, it's actually taped, the, the gentleman taped them together, but the first one is a workbook. So it's supposed to be, we used to do that in the United States. We used to have a textbook and we used to have a workbook back when we actually had real schools. And then we just moved away from everything. But this part here is all workbook exercises. And then the, you, let me see the second, the, the, the book in the back is the theory, right? So this is the actual textbook, right? So it's a different um, part here. And as you can see, once again, no pictures, right? No pictures, except when they're talking about graphing lines, right? But notice that when they teach you um, limits, for example, <coughs> excuse me, limits, this book covers limits. A lot of the uh, derivatives, notice the derivatives one. And let me see if they also have a, a chapter on functions as well. Rational functions, they discuss rational functions and logarithmic functions as well. They also have integrals, uh, in integralis is called uh, in the Spanish language. Uh, but notice, notice the chapter. Again, it's just beautiful. Notice, no pictures, no fluff. So I think from what I'm seeing, um, there's no wonder that students, you know, we've seen that in the United States when students come from different countries, um, they're generally uh, better prepared in the math uh, than many, many American students. Um, I was also able to find this book. I haven't looked at it too much yet, but it looks really good. It's from, this is an older one, right? This is from 19, 1973, 1973. But notice that I <laughs> just beautiful, beautiful mathematics. And it says in the, on the cover, it says that the original book was published in, on the 7th of March, it says 1968, 1968. Notice the exercises, by the way, here's one on symmetry, symmetry. So I'm very happy with my, uh, with that I was able to find these books as well. And I will surely be making use of some of the exercises for just my own classes. Um, but I'm just amazed at how you see that those of you who were questioning me on why this is that in the rest of the world, they do uh, more rigorous mathematics, right? And some of you, when I did my video on why we should be rigorous in our mathematics, uh, some of you were very critical, not all of you, but some of some people were very critical. Now you see most most people uh, around the world, that's what they do. So uh, I'm just very happy to, um, I was able to also go to the museum, which uh, that was on my checklist. 
and I was able to have a very, very successful business trip. I will return uh, to the United States, uh, God willing, God willingly tomorrow, and everything will be back to normal um, in that sense. But yes, uh, I was pleasantly surprised. I, I will be discussing other things. Not everything is bad, of course, um, in Europe. There are uh, certain things that I find positive. Um, I think they have, from what I've seen, although people here would will disagree with me, but I think they have a, a more stable society in many ways. Um, although if you talk to people like your taxi driver, uh, I was talking to the taxi driver today and he, he uh, I told him about the YouTube channel. He looked up the YouTube channel. He said, I'm sorry, I won't be able to understand most of it, he said, but uh, he, he was talking about how he, do, he does find uh, that some of the debates that we have in the U.S. are similar here. He said, that actually, they, they have very similar debates here about social aspects and things like that, uh, although it's not quite as uh, divided as we are uh, in the United States. And I was trying to explain to him, I said, in the United States, what happens is that we are basically at a, a civil war. Uh, we have, on the one hand, people who want to protect uh, the traditional America, the traditional values that we've always had the constitution. And then we have people who have zero respect for our freedoms and they want to change us and, and, and turn us into some kind of um, progressive socialist utopia. Uh, but anyway, I hope that this uh, was useful in giving you some perspective.